lift up your name in our midst, oh God. We give you all glory and all praise this morning, even as we declare that Jesus Christ is our sovereign Lord this morning. Father, we lift up your name. We exalt your name in this place. We declare your glory in this place, oh God. Father, thank you for your presence this morning. Thank you, my God, for your word that goes forth this morning. I pray, Father, that you and you alone would be lifted up. You and you alone would be exalted in our midst this morning, Father. Thank you for your mighty presence. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Father, thank you for hearts that are ready to receive your word this morning. Father, thank you this morning that you move in the midst of your people to bless them this morning. I declare this now in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, worship team. That was awesome. Thank you. You may take your seats. I greet you in the awesome and precious name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What an awesome time of worship. Hallelujah. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord. I bring you greetings from Pastor Rufus and Diane Lachmigadu and Pastor Ranji Gounden from Radiant Life Ministries, all the way from the land of milk and honey, Port Shepston. Amen. This morning, I have a word for you. It is a personal word. It is a word that is personally for you. And I want you to write this word down. If you can, write this down in your Bible, somewhere that you will see it every time you open your Bible. I want you to write it in bold letters, capital letters. Highlight it, make it plainly visible. I want you to write these words down because I guarantee you that when you receive these words, when you understand them, when you believe it, when you, when, you make, when you settle these words in your heart, it will change your life forever. You will no longer be the same person. It will change the way you think. It will change the way you walk. It will change the way you talk. It will change your faith walk. I want you to write these words down. My God, my God, Hears me when I call. My God hears me when I call. Now, many of you know this. It's like, yeah, God, God hears me. But I want you to make an effort this morning to concentrate on this statement. My God hears me when I call. I want you to settle this in your heart this morning. I mean, I can preach about a lot of things, but the Holy Spirit caused me to preach this word this morning. And I don't say that lightly. I, I, I've been impressed by God to preach this word this morning because I believe that the church knows it on the surface. The church knows it on the surface, like, yes, God exists. We know it on the surface, but there is a level of believing and understanding this word, my God hears me when I call, there's a level of understanding of this word that will catapult your faith to another level. Yeah. Amen. Now, what am I talking about? So let's start with some basic scriptures. And I want to start with Genesis chapter 4, verses 25 and 26, is it? 25 and 26. Genesis chapter 1, we all know is the creation of, of the earth. Genesis chapter 2, we know, is the Garden of Eden. Genesis chapter 3, we know, is the fall of man. Genesis chapter 4, we know, is the story of Cain and Abel. But the, at the end of Genesis chapter 4, there are two verses that are very, very important. This is what it says. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son and named him Seth. For God has appointed another seed for me instead of Abel, whom Cain killed. Verse 26. And as for Seth, to him also a son was born, and he named him Enosh. Now this is the verse I want you to see. Then, then, then men began to call on the name of the Lord. 
some way, God slipped this one, one scripture in. Then men began to call on the name of the Lord. Now, if you look into the chronology of Adam and you go into chapter 5, you'll discover that Adam is now 235 years old when his grandson is born. Right? So if Adam's chronological age began when, when he fell from the fall of mankind, when he fell, when, he, when day one was when he fell, this is 235 years later. For 235 years, nobody was calling on the name of the Lord. Somehow, here in Genesis, in the, in the lifespan of Adam's grandson, suddenly men discovered that there was an invisible, mighty God, Jehovah God, that they could call upon who would respond to them. Right here in Genesis, we have this awesome uh, verse that says, Then men began to call upon the name of the Lord. Now, this word call is a powerful word. It's not, God, I call on you. No, it's not a mumbling word. It's not a quiet word. It is a powerful, robust word. It is a word that means cry out. It is a word that means seek after. It is a word that means desperately inquire after God. It is a word that means urgent, urgent, looking for the attention of someone. This is the same word that God uses in Genesis chapter 3 when God was looking for, when God was walking in the cool of the day. The Bible says, he called out to Adam, where are you? He called out to Adam. That's the same word. In other words, God was seeking after Adam. And this is the same word that is being used here. Call on the name of the Lord. Men began to call on the name of the Lord. This word call, this calling on the name of the Lord begins here in Genesis. And guess what? It goes all through scripture right to Revelation. And it's a phrase that we hear over and over again. And we hear it in similar phrases. For example, we cry out to God. Abraham built an altar and called out to God. David cried out to God. The children of Israel cried out to God. And they sought the face of God. And they prayed and bowed their heads to God. Or they lifted up their eyes to the Lord. Familiar scriptures? Calling out to God. This calling out to God is the hallmark of every man and woman of God in the Bible. It is a hallmark of every man and woman of God in the Bible. Now, you and I, we are walking a faith walk, right? We're trying to live by faith, okay? We want to live by faith because without faith, it's impossible to believe in God. We want to walk a faith walk. Your faith walk can only begin with this vital truth. There is a vital truth that you must settle in your heart. You must establish it. You must know it like you know it. Like you, if I ask you, Gary, are you saved? You're not going to debate about it. Because you know that you know that you know. You have settled in your heart that Jesus Christ died for you and is risen. And because of that, you are saved. And you've accepted him as your Lord and Savior. It's a settled truth. Similarly, there is, you must settle this truth in your heart before you can walk a faith walk. And this is the truth. God hears me when I call. God hears me when I call. Because it's pointless trying to serve a God who doesn't hear you. What's the point of serving a God who can't hear you? There's no point in that, right? So you must settle this truth in your heart that when you call out to God, when you cry out to God, when you pray, God hears you. Amen. Amen. Now I want to prove to you in scripture this morning. And I could do a lot of things, but this morning I want to prove to you in scripture that God is a God who hears. That God is a God who hears. And, the chorus, and of course, he doesn't just hear, we know. We know he responds. He answers prayer. Isn't that so? So 
God is a God who hears. Now, I'm going to start by showing you in Deuteronomy. Uh, Deuteronomy is an awesome book. It's a, actually, Moses is giving his farewell speech. 33 chapters. If you were there, you'd have to sleep overnight. Right? 33 chapters he's giving his farewell speech. He's telling the children of Israel, this is what God has done for you. Brought you out of Egypt, took you to the Red Sea, provided for you, defended you, delivered you, etc., etc., etc. And he takes them through the 40-year walk, an historical re recount of what they had been through for 40 years. So here they are now at the edge of the promised land, ready to take a walk into the promised land. And Moses makes this amazing statement in Deuteronomy 4 verse 7. Highlight it in your Bible if you can. Moses tells the children of Israel, for what great nation is there that has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is to us? For whatever reason we may call upon him. Moses is saying, is there any other God in any nation in the whole world that has a God like ours who hears us? Another version says, there's no other God in the whole earth like our God because our God hears us. That our God hears us. Moses was telling the children of Israel, you see, all these foreign gods that we encountered along the way. Yeah. Because they encountered lots of foreign gods. They encountered the Amorites, the Jebusites, the Hittites, and all of these nations served foreign gods. They served gods that, of statues of wood and stone. And Moses was telling them, all these other gods that you encountered along the way, there was one problem with them. They couldn't hear you. They couldn't hear you. Yeah. And God confirms that because we know in scripture, God says, they have eyes and they can't see. Yeah. They have ears and they can't hear. They have noses and they can't smell. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So God confirms that word later on in scripture. But Moses is telling this, these Israelites, Israelites, 40 years you came through. God took you through all these nations and counted all these gods. There's one thing you should know. There's only one God. There's only one God who hears you, and that is Jehovah, the Lord, Yahweh, the Lord. Amen. Amen. That's our God. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Amen. So Moses is telling them about Yahweh, the God, the God who hears when I call, who hears when I call. Our faith walk will be pointless if you pray and don't believe God heard you. Because if you don't believe God heard you, how will you receive what God has planned for you? Amen. So here's Jesus in John chapter 11. You know the story. It's very familiar to you. Jesus is standing at the tomb of Lazarus. Lazarus has been dead for four days. Jesus is about to raise Lazarus from the dead. Amen? And Jesus makes this amazing statement. John chapter 11, verse 42. 41. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. Heard me, past tense. Which means Jesus prayed in the past that now he's thanking God for hearing him. When did Jesus pray? Four days ago. Four days ago. Before Lazarus died. Four days ago. Jesus prayed. Right? And he says, God, I thank you that you heard me. Now, is Jesus going to lie that God hears? No. Jesus is confirming to you and I that our heavenly father hears when his servant prays to him. Because remember, Jesus is coming as a man, right? right? And go to the next verse. And I know that you always hear me. Hello. I like that. I like that. In other words, he's not going to hear you sometime. Some of the time. He's going to hear you 
always. Even if your prayer sounds ridiculous. Even if your prayer sounds impossible. Even if your situation is too difficult. Is anything too hard for the Lord? He hears you always. But because of the people who are standing by, I've said this that they may believe that you sent me. So what was Jesus telling this crowd? He was telling this crowd, my God hears me. My God hears me when I call. My God hears me when I pray. You see, beloved, how about when you start your prayer, whatever it is that you're praying for, you start with God, I thank you that you heard me. You know why? Because he says before you can even pray, I already know your needs. Jesus said that in the, in the Lord's Prayer. You know what? Before you even pray, he already knows what you're going to ask. So start with, Lord, I thank you that you heard me. You never pray a single thing yet, but you say, Lord, thank you that you heard me. You know what that means? That means you work, you're stepping into faith. You're stepping into faith. You see? You're stepping into a position of faith for you to receive what God uh, is going to do for you. Amen. There's another familiar story in uh, Luke chapter 1. We know the story. We hear this all the time, Christmas time. Zechariah was in the temple praying. The Bible says Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth were well advanced in years. They had no children. Well advanced in years and they had no children. And Zechariah was in the temple offering up incense to the Lord. And this is what it says in um, Luke chapter 1. Verse 13. Remember that Zechariah was a righteous man. Remember what the scripture says? He was a righteous man. He was an upright and blameless. Do you know that you can be upright, righteous, and blameless and still not have this vital truth settled within you? You can be upright, righteous, and blameless and still not have this truth settled in your heart. That God hears my prayer. Here's Zacharias. Listen to what the angel says. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son. And you will call his name John. Hold on. Zechariah is well advanced in years. And well advanced, not 40, 50, 60, well advanced, 70, 80, maybe 90. His wife is also with this well advanced in years. You can't tell me that he's in the temple praying for a child. So when did he pray? 40 years ago. 50 years ago, him and his wife prayed for a child. And the angel Gabriel comes and says, Zechariah, your prayer has been heard. Your prayer has been heard. I got news for you, beloved. You thought God didn't hear. You think God didn't hear when you prayed that time. You prayed for some stuff years ago. It is reserved for a time such as this. It is reserved for a time such as this. You should, let me tell you something, beloved. Your duty is to believe God heard you. God's job is to perform it in the perfect timing. In the perfect timing. God hears me when I call. God hears me when I call. Settle it, beloved. Please, settle it in your heart. Establish it in your heart. Don't leave this place today unless you know that you know that you know that you know that you know that, you know that when, I, when I say, Father... He hears me. He hears me. Every, there's parents sitting here. You go to the mall and your child wanders away from you and your child says, Mom, Dad, please don't tell me you're not going to hear. You will respond immediately. Your ears are tuned to their voice. You know what they sound like. You know what they call is like. You're going to immediately say, where are you? And you're going to start looking. How much more is your heavenly father tuned to you? Your creator God, your heavenly God, your Abba father, he is tuned into you and he knows your sound because you are unique to him. You are never the same as anybody else. 
you are unique to him and he knows your sound. I snuck in here, Daniel chapter 9 and Daniel chapter 10. Daniel had two encounters, for famous ones that we know of, where angels visited him. Daniel chapter 9, verse 20 and 20 to 23 says this awesome thing here. Listen to what he says. While I was still speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord, my God, for the holy mountain of my God. Yes, while I was speaking in prayer, the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, reached me about the time of the evening offering. And he informed me and talked to me and said, Oh, Daniel, I have now come forth To give you skill to understand. Watch this verse. At the beginning of your supplication, the command went out and I came to tell you that you are greatly beloved. At the beginning, in other words, when a minute Daniel opened his mouth, God heard and sent someone. The minute Daniel opened his mouth, at the beginning of his supplication, God heard and sent someone. Daniel chapter 10, verse 11 and 12. What am I proving to you, beloved? God hears. God hears you when you call. And he said to me, oh, Daniel, man, greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright, for I have now been sent to you. While he was speaking this word to me, I stood trembling. Then he said to me, do not fear, Daniel, Daniel, for from the first day, that you set your heart to understand and humble yourself before your God. Your words were heard and I have come because of your words. Now I know Daniel was this awesome man of God, excellent spirit, and he was a righteous man, but I want you to see something. He's serving a God who hears. Your God. My God. Same God. He's not going to hear Daniel and not hear you. He's not going to show favorites. You see, I've got no favorites. Isn't he saying I've got no favorites? I've got no favorites. If he can hear Daniel, he's going to hear you. Yeah. Amen. If he hears David, he's going to hear you. David was an awesome man of God. David, in the Psalms, constantly cried out to God. David, if you read through the Psalms, you, will, you can highlight almost every scripture has, and I cried out to God. And he heard me. And I called out to God and he heard me. David was in trouble in, in, in Psalm 57. Okay, we'll go there later. Oh, let's go there now. David was in trouble in Psalm 57. He was in so much of trouble because Saul was looking to kill him, right? And he was at this place in his life where one wrong move and he's dead. And David says, I will cry out to God most high, to God who performs all things for me. Verse 3, he shall send from heaven and save me. He reproaches the one who would swallow me up. Selah. You know what, Selah? Stop and think about this. Pause and think about this. David knew this. David knew this to be a truth. He settled it within within himself. He didn't doubt it. He knew that when he called out to God, God will respond. And this is my encouragement to you this morning, beloved. This is a simple word. This is not some big revelation somewhere. But I want to tell you something. If you and I can settle this one truth in our hearts, establish it, that when I open my mouth and I speak to God, my God, he will hear me. He will hear me. Amen. Now, you know the famous story with Elijah on Mount Carmel? Famous story. You've heard it over and over again. Here's Elijah, Mount Carmel. There's 450 prophets of Baal, and, they, um, and Elijah challenges them. He says, see, you call out to your God, Baal. I'll call out to my God, the Lord. Let's see whose God is going to respond. Right? So the Bible tells us that they did their sacrifice and they started calling out to God from morning till noon. They cried out, Oh, Baal, hear us. Oh, Baal.
kill. Yes. Cut themselves. You know, like, like you know. Okay. Cut themselves. And started doing some funny tricks. Oh, Baal, yes. And the Bible says, but there was no answer. No answer. No voice. Then it was Elijah's turn. Got his sacrifice ready. It was his turn. This is what it says in 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 37 and 38. Let's read it. Hear me, O Lord. This is how Elijah starts. Hear me, O Lord, that this people may know that you are the Lord, God, and that you have turned your, their hearts back to you again. What was the proof that God was Lord? That he would hear. That was the proof. Because the challenge was, let's see who's God going to respond. Because the one that responds is the true and the living God. And Elijah says, now God, hear me and respond so that you can prove to these people that you are the living God. Well, you know what happens? God responds with fire. God responds with fire. Beloved, if you will settle in your heart that God hears you when you call, I guarantee you that when you take that step of faith, he will respond. He will respond. Amen? Because he is a God who hears you. The Bible says the Lord is near to all who call upon him, even all who call upon his name. Jeremiah 33 verse 3, call upon me and I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things that you do not know. Amen. The Psalms are full of it. The Psalms are full of it. In 2 Kings, before I go there, you know, it, 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 it does happen. And it has happened to, I think, every single person that is here. If you've been a Christian for a while now, you must have had this experience. That when you were in deep trouble, <laughs> You know that deep trouble, the hot water, when you've got no way out, when there's no chance of somebody helping you. Bank said no. Friend said no. Borrowing said no. Even the, if you try to steal from your boss today, you didn't have money. <laughs> there was no way out for you. Yeah. And so you cried out. You know that cry that came from the inside? It, somehow it happens that when we are in our most distressful place, that the innermost, our innermost being is awakened to cry out to God. And guess what? God responds. I, I'm, I guarantee you that you are sitting here today and you are saying amen to this. Because God will always respond to the call of his children. Amen. He will always respond to those who cry out yes. to him. Amen. God will always respond. So there's an interesting story in 2 Kings chapter 1. When you read the story for the first time, you're like, okay, this is a nice story, interesting. I wonder what's the point, okay? And there's a couple of things that you can pick up and, and enjoy, but it's such, a, it's such an awesome story. So this is how the story goes. <clears throat> and I'm going to paraphrase because it's quite long. The Bible says that Ahab and Jezebel, you know those two, those wicked two, those two that pair were so wicked that they turned the whole of Israel away from following after the Lord. This too made Israel, the children of Israel, the Jewish nation, follow idols and all kinds of foreign gods. And the Bible says that they had a son called Ahaziah. Now, when Ahab died, Ahaziah became king. Okay? So let's read uh, 2 Kings chapter 1, verse 2. Now, Ahaziah fell through the lattice, that is, in his balcony, of his upper room in Samaria and was injured. So he sent messengers and said to them, Go inquire of Baal Zebub, the god of Ekron, notice God in small g, the god of Ekron, whether I shall recover from this injury. Let's stop there. Ahaziah says to his messengers, Go to Baalzebub. Now, Baalzebub means Lord of Flies. Lord of Flies. And if the only thing you should know is flies like dead bodies, right? Now, here's this guy. I mean, he wants to know whether he's going to live or die. 
He's asking the God of flies who likes dead bodies whether he's going to live or die. Not a good idea. Come on. Uh, that, that, that's not a good idea. He's going to tell you, yeah, you're going to die. <laughs> For sure. But not a good idea. But, he, he, but Isaiah says, go to Ekron and inquire whether I'm going to recover from this injury. Now, to get to Ekron, the messengers have to bypass, go through Jerusalem. Okay? Verse 2. Verse 3. But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Arise, go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria, and say to them, Is it because there is no God in Israel that you are going to inquire of Baal-zebub, the yeah. god of Ekron? Yeah. Verse 4. Now therefore, thus says the Lord, you shall not come down from the bed to which you have gone up, you shall surely die. So Elijah departed. Now, Elijah, as you know, was a prophet of the Lord. Amen. Elijah wants to convince, oh, let's put it this way. If you want to convince somebody to follow God, you're at least going to give him some good news, right? At least try and give him some good news. Say something nice. Give some hope. If you want to convince somebody, hey, stop following idols, follow the real God, you're going to give them some good news, Gary. You're not going to tell them you're going to die. You're going to give some good news. But Elijah tells these messengers, go tell the king, is there no God in Israel that you can inquire of? Because of this, you're going to die. Right? This is what Elijah was saying. Elijah was saying, you're looking for a God that can hear you, that can hear your question, and a God that will give you an answer, isn't it? So why are you looking outside of Jerusalem? There must be a God in Israel that can hear your request and answer you. Right? Okay, so here's the story goes. Uh, the messengers go back now, and they tell Isaiah, we were on our way, we met this hairy guy with a leather belt, this is what he said. And Ahaziah says, oh, this is Elijah the Tishbite. Now, Ahaziah did not grow up in a home where they worshipped the Lord. He grew up in a home where they worshipped idols. Who, remember who his parents were? They worshipped idols. Yeah. So, he actually didn't know the Lord. But, the fact that he recognized that this was Elijah the Tishbite tells me that he must have heard childhood stories. He must have heard what Elijah did in the days of his parents. Amen. So that's how he recognized that this was Elijah, a prophet of the Lord. So he tells his messengers, go now and bring Elijah to me. The Bible says in verse, let's go to verse uh, 9. <clears throat> then the king sent to him a captain of 50 with his 50 men. So he went up to him, and there he was. So this is 50 soldiers with one captain. And there he was sitting on the top of a hill, and he spoke to him. The captain now spoke to him. Man of God, the king has said, come down. Next verse. So Elijah answered and said to the captain of 50, If I am a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume you, and your 50 men. And fire came down from heaven and consumed him and his 50 men. Easy story, right? The God, uh, Isaiah in his, sitting in his bedroom, injured, hears about this. And he sends another 50 men with another captain. So this other second 50 men and their captain go now. They go to Elijah. They say to him, the king says, come down quickly. Elijah responds similarly. He says, if I am the man of, a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your 50 men. Fire came down from heaven and consumed him and his 50 men. The king is in his palace, in his bed. He hears about this. He says, he sends another 50 men. I mean, yo, he's... Life is cheap for him, right? 
So he sends another 50 men and their captain. The third captain now, when he gets to Elijah, he says, ah, this is not on. He says to Elijah, he says, man of God, my life is precious. And the life, let, the, let my life and the life of my 50 men be precious in your sight. Be precious in your sight. And at that point, God tells Elijah, go with him. Go with this captain and his 50 men to Ahaziah's house. So they spared, right? The fire didn't come and consume them. So off they go. They go to Ahaziah. Ahaziah is in his bed. He's injured. He's bedridden at this point. What started this encounter? Isn't it true? That this whole encounter with Elijah started because Ahaziah wanted to know whether he's going to live or die. That was the reason why we started this whole story here. This whole thing started about Elijah sending this message because Ahaziah wanted to know from a God. Not from a man. He wanted to know from a God. Am I going to live or am I going to die? So what was all this drama now of 50 men dying and the captain, another 50 men dying and all, and, and, uh, and the captain, and then 50 men going and pleading for their life. And getting, what was all this drama about? You see, God was showing Isaiah that he was a God that could take life or spare life. He was a God that could hear his prophet saying, fire come down, or he could hear the ordinary man say, God spare my life. He was a God. God was showing Ahaziah that those other gods wouldn't be able to hear him. But there was a living God in Israel who could spare life or take life. And wasn't that what Ahaziah wanted to know? Am I going to live or am I going to die? That was what he was asking. Elijah was proving to him that God heard. When Elijah said, consume. And God heard when the, when the soldier said, save me. Save my life. Yeah. Ezra had, had the perfect opportunity to say, God, you're real. You're the real God. You're the God who hears. Not like that fake one in Ekron, the Lord of flies. You are the real God. You see, Our God, our God, in his hands is our life. Amen. The Bible says in Psalm 68 verse 20, write it somewhere. It is a word for you. And some of you have even used this word. Psalm 68 verse 20. Listen to what the Bible says. Our God is the God of salvation. And to our, to God the Lord belong escapes from death. Write that scripture down. Because the next time you feel like you're going to die, let me tell you, you remind God of this word. God, to you belongs escapes from death. To you, God belongs. In other words, only God can decide whether you're going to live or die. Only God can decide whether you're going to live or die. You know, there's a scripture that says, to every man is appointed death. You know that scripture? Many people read it wrong. They think to every man is appointed a day to die. No, no, no. No. You can change that day. Hezekiah changed that day. You remember Hezekiah? Prophet went to him and said, get your house in order. You're going to die. What did Hezekiah do? He went to God. He went to the temple. He called out to God. He said, God, you know what I've done. You know what I've done. And God said, I'm going to give you 15 more years. To every man is appointed death. Yes, we're all going to die. But your date, you negotiate with God. Your date, you negotiate with God. You say, God, I'm in dire trouble. Doctor's report says cancer. Doctor's report said TB. Doctor's report said this is bad. You're not going to live. You're not going to live. But God, to you belongs escapes from death and guess what he hears you he hears you he hears you this is our god 
This is what I need you to settle. Before you leave this place today, settle it. Settle it in your heart. Don't leave this place negotiating about this. Please, settle it in your heart that when you call to God, he hears you and he will answer in his perfect timing. He will answer because he says, I delight in my children. I delight in you. He says, call unto me and I will answer you. He says, before you call, I will answer you. He gives the children of Israel, he gives us precious promises that he hears us and he will respond to us. He will answer us. And God is not there to punish you and to destroy you. God is there so that, God, you know what he says? I desire that all men be saved. I desire that all men be saved. He says he desires that all of us prosper and be in health. Isn't it so? I desire that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. He desires that of you and I. He wants that for us. So God is not there sitting and waiting, okay, when is this fellow going to pray so I can kill him? No, no, no. No, he's waiting to hear you call. Because he wants to respond on your behalf. He wants to respond on your behalf. He wants to show you up before the world. He wants, to, he wants to lift you up and say, this is my son. This is my daughter. Look, this is my son. This is my daughter. See the glory that I've put on her. See the glory that I've put on him. Because when, you, when he does that for you and I, he gets the glory. Amen. He gets the praise. Right. Amen? Right. Isn't that our God? Yes. Is that not what he wants to do for you and I? Yes. Yes. Will you believe him when he says... He answers, he hears you. He hears you. Did I go to that? Psalm 40 verse 1 and 2. This is David again. David says some fantastic things. He says, I waited patiently for the Lord. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me. Not inclined. He heard me. He, 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 he turned his ear. Turned his ear. And he heard my cry. Verse 2. Oh, I've been here. I've been here. I don't know if you've been there. Huh? In the pit? In the miry clay? Oh. Remember when you were out there in the world in sin? Surrounded by the things of the world. Surrounded by the sins of sinful things that you were doing. You were in the pit. You were in miry clay. It was miry clay. Dirty clay. Dirty. Filthy. Clay. David says, and he brought me out and he set my feet upon a rock oh, not all. that's not all he established it he established my steps in other words he changed the way I walk <laughs> he changed the way I walk he put me on the rock which is Jesus Christ and he changed the way I walk amen why David called and God heard him David called and God heard Establish it, beloved. Establish it in your heart. Determine with yourself today. If there's anything that I'm going to leave here today with, it's this. When I call, God will hear. I believe my God hears when I call. Did you write that down in your Bible or were you still thinking whether I'm joking? You're still thinking whether uh, is it good enough to write. Write it down. It is good. My God hears me Amen. when I call. Amen. You see, Satan doesn't want you to call. You know why Satan doesn't want you to call? Because he knows God's going to hear. He knows God is going to hear. He knows God is going to hear. And he knows God is going to answer. So if he can't stop God from hearing and he can't stop God from answering, he can stop you from calling. Am I right? He can't stop God from answering. He can't stop God from hearing, but he can stop you from calling. He can stop you from calling. You know what? Why Satan wants you not to call? Because he knows God is going to come. He's going to come swiftly to your rescue. He's going to answer. He's going to move heaven and earth. The earth will tremble and shake and chains will break. But God and God will answer. Amen. 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 God will answer. He wants you. Satan wants you 
to take the another route. Phone a friend. Google, you get the answer. Go to three specialists and get a second opinion. Spend a lot of money. Oh, you no money in your pocket. You know your boss won't know if you take a couple thousand from the bank account. You do this, that, that. He's not going to find out. Satan wants you to find another way. He doesn't want you to call. He doesn't want you to call. Oh, but David says, when I cried out to the Lord, when I, when I, when I, when I turned to him, David says, when I called out to him, he rescued me. He rescued me. He delivered me. He delivered me. Amen. Solomon built this fantastic temple. You know the temple that Solomon built? Beautiful temple. And Solomon did what is called the dedication of the temple in 2 Chronicles chapter 6. It was a massive event. I mean, thousands and thousands and thousands of bulls were sacrificed. Solomon did this, uh, um, gave generously to God when he, when, when he dedicated this temple. But the thing, the most important thing that Solomon did was his prayer. Because Solomon knew that God heard. God was a God that heard. And this is what Solomon says in 2 Chronicles 6 verse 19. He's dedicating the temple now, right? He says, he says to God, Yet regard the prayer of your servant and his supplication, O Lord my God. Listen to the cry and the prayer which your servant is praying before you. Right? And then Solomon goes on from there. There's like another 20 more verses in which Solomon says, in which Solomon says, God, this temple that is being dedicated to you, please hear when your servants call to you. In fact, God, if there is, and I'm just paraphrasing because there's lots of scriptures in between. He says, for example, he says, if anybody sins and they turn towards this temple and call out to you, Hear them and forgive. He says, if anybody uh, uh, does something wrong with his neighbor, commits murder or, or steals from his neighbor, or, and they repent and they come to you and they turn towards you, hear God. Hear and forgive. He says, uh, God, if, 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 if your children are in battle somewhere and the enemy is about to overcome them and they turn to this temple and they call out to you and they say, God, save us. Hear them and save them. He says, God, if, if your children are in a foreign land, not even in Israel, if they're in another land and they've got problems and they turn to this place and they, and they call out to you, hear them and answer He's, he's, he's saying to God, God, prove to them that you're the true God. When you hear, when you hear and respond, they're going to know you're the true God. God responds to Solomon's prayer in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, in verse 12. This is what he says. This is God talking to Solomon now. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said to him, I have heard your prayer. And I've chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. Let's go to the next verse. When I shut up heaven and there is no rain or command the locusts to devour land. So this is what God says. He says, whatever you ask, I'm going to respond to. Because I've heard your prayer. You see, beloved, the children of Israel had this temple that God Who's, in which God's presence dwelt. And because God's presence dwelt there, Solomon knew that when anybody turns to this place, turns to God, calls out to the Lord God of Israel, Jehovah God, Yahweh God, God will respond. You and I, guess what? We're living in the New Testament. We don't have temples, but the presence of God dwells in us. The Bible tells us that his Holy Spirit lives in you and I. God with us. Now, if God is with you, with you, God is with you, he's with you. Pastor Amos, can you hear me? You're with me, right? Is he not going to hear you? 
That's how near he is to you. He is near to you. He will hear you when you call to him. When you call to him. I love this verse here in Galatians chapter. I know I'm giving you a lot of scriptures, but it's nice. Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4 verse 6. This is what God says. He says, because you are sons. He's talking to the New Testament believer. That's you and I, right? He's talking to you and I now, New Testament believers. He says, because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. In other words, the Holy Spirit dwelling in you is always crying out on your behalf, Abba, Father. In other words, there's help already in you to even call. He's already in you, giving you the help to even call. So don't think you can't call. Because the whole, and is God not going to hear the Holy Spirit? He must. It's his spirit. And dwelling in you when you get in line with the Holy Spirit, when you, get, when you come alongside him and you call out to God, he will hear. Because you're calling out from the inside. You're calling out with the Holy Spirit alongside you. Isn't he your helper? Isn't he comes alongside you to help you to call out to God? And God will hear. You see, beloved, don't leave this place today until you have settled in yourself that God hears you when you call. Can I ask you something? How many of you are sitting here today know, hey, now that I know this, I've got some stuff I want to call out to God for. Amen? Yeah. I know this now. Yeah. Now I know, hey, I know God hears me. Yeah. Now is the perfect time for me to start calling to God for some stuff. Come on. Hey? I'm not talking about things. I'm talking about situations. I'm talking about uh, difficulties. I'm talking about uh, issues that you have not been able to get rid of. But because God hears you when you call, today you can call to him. Today, what you can call to him. Can you stand with me this morning? Can you stand with me this morning? Father, I thank you. I thank you that today you hear when your children call. You hear when your children call. Father, I thank you that your word says that you will hear when, you, when we call out to you and you will answer us and you will show us great and mighty things, that you will come and rescue us, that you are, Father, you are a deliverer, that you are a savior, that you will save us, oh God. If that's you this morning and you want to call out to God this morning, don't do it standing there, come to the front. Don't do it standing there, come to the front. I believe this morning that even as God is in this place this morning and he is ready to hear you. He is ready to hear you. He is ready to hear you. If that's you this morning, don't just stand there. Believe in your heart. Believe when God says that I will answer you. I hear you this morning. If that's you and don't stand there, come to the front. Let God hear your call this morning. Come. Hallelujah. God is telling you call and I will answer. Yes. Unless you seek, you're not going to find. But today is a day of deliverance. Today is a day of breakthrough. And I don't want anyone to miss out that opportunity today. Whatever your situation, whatever your need, the servant of God has come to seek God for this church. What is the word that we need for our breakthrough? And what he says, call. What he says, call. And I say to you today, let not the enemy beat you. Whatever your trial, whatever your situation. Thank you, sirs. Anyone else want to take a walk? Come to the front. Come to the front. Don't be scared. Thank you. Thank you. There's there. Hallelujah. Come to the front. Come to the front. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Come so understand on top. Hallelujah. And many a time. We are buffeted because it said God hasn't answered. But yet God is breaking through to be manifested at a certain time. Some of you have been waiting for days. Some of you have been waiting for weeks and months. Some of you for years. 
But I said, He has heard. He has heard. The break anointing is working. God has already sent the angels. Like Daniel, maybe there's a war in the heavenlies before your breakthrough comes. But He has heard. The key is your God has heard your cry. He has heard your cry. And He has never forsaken you. He has never given up on you. Somebody, I want you to know He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. You are precious to Him. And I said, He's going to make a way. He's going to make a way. And He's going to break the way. Hallelujah. The time has come. You don't have to go home with a, with a heavy heart. But I say to you this day, if there's anyone else with a heavy heart, I say now is your time for the miracle. Hallelujah. 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 We give you glory. We give you honor, Lord. We give you praise. We give you worship, O oh Lord. And we bless your holy name, Lord. We praise you with all our heart and soul and every fiber of our being. You are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy. We want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, we can call upon the name of the Lord and that He answers this day. We say thank you, we say thank you. We say thank you, we serve a living God. We say thank you, we serve a mighty God. We thank you, we serve a holy God. Oh, we say thank you, Lord. We say thank you, thank you, thank you. You never leave the forsake. We say thank you, Abba. We say thank you, Jesus. We say thank you, Lord. Just thank you, somebody that is a God who hears. We serve a loving God. We say thank you. We say thank you even right now. You're in the front, whatever it is, you can call upon Him softly. Just tell Him what you need. Even those of you in the back, you just call upon Him and say, Father, I call. Father, I call. I call upon you. I want my breakthrough. I need a breakthrough right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We give you praise. Let you just come up on top and we we'll pray together. Hallelujah. Beloved, you know what happens? Where there's unity, He commands. And today we're standing on the top as family. And we three are standing in one voice. And we're saying there is nothing that our God cannot do for you. We are saying today as a family, there's nothing that is too difficult for our job. And I say no matter how dark you are, no matter how deep your situation is I'm saying to you my God is able to do it for you everybody raising your hand I'm going to ask Linda to pray and if Swana wants to continue to whatever the Lord said she can do it then we're going to take communion hallelujah Lord we honor you today God today we are just in awe of how much you love us God you love us so much that you have a specific word for a specific time for your children, God. We thank you today for that word, God. And we know that you are a covenant-keeping God. And we know that your word is a and amen. If you said it, so shall it be. We thank you for your word that says that your ear is always, you said always, God, inclined to the cries of our hearts today, God. We say thank you today, God. You always, God. There is no one who can give such a promise to us like you, Abba Father, that you always incline your ear to our heart's cry. You always say to us, God, call upon you in the times of trouble. And you said, you will hear. We thank you, Lord. You said you will hear today, God. I thank you for every son. I thank you for every daughter that is standing here before you, God. You know the cry of the heart. You know their desires. You know their needs today. Father, I thank 
you for that word that has come from your throne room this morning, reassuring us that when we call upon you, you will answer. And Father, every petition, every need, every breakthrough, God, every troubled marriage today, every financial problem, Lord, every sickness, Lord, every deliverance that we need from you today, we call upon you today. We lay it before you today. We make it known to you today. And we thank you, God, that you are hearing and that you will send the answer and you will deliver us today, oh God. You will provide. We thank you, God. Truly, we are a beloved people today, God. Such an awesome promise, God. I pray today over your sons and daughters, they will not grow weary. I come against that weariness today in the name of Jesus. But Father, we will be a people who will stand firm, God, and patiently wait and depend upon you, knowing, God, that your word will come to pass. You are saying to us, you're encouraging us, you're saying, I, the Lord God, will make it happen to you, daughter, to you, son, at the right time. So stay in faith and wait patiently and call upon me and I will answer. We thank you, Father God. What an encouragement to us this morning, God, to know, God, that we're never alone, that every little whisper of ours, God, even in the deep chambers of our heart and our minds, God, but you know it, God. You hear it, God. And Lord, I thank you that you are a God of answer. You are that prayer answering God. We thank you today, God. We thank you for every answer today in faith in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so I seal you, your life in the front. I seal that. I pray God protect their faith now. Protect their faith. And this whole congregation. Every one of us protect their faith. Lord, you said you will encourage our faith. You will protect our faith. We will not waver when we believe. My God can move mountains. Can break every chain. My God can relocate. What the enemy meant for evil, God can turn around for good. I believe that. And I give you praise. I believe that and I give you worship. And so I bless you. And so I bless you. And so I bless everyone today. And knowing this day, our God has heard your prayers. Amen. Let us give him a praise, somebody. Hallelujah. Behind every powerful woman is a mighty man of God. You know, they always say behind every man is a powerful woman of God. But I want to say behind every powerful woman is a mighty man of God. And... Uh, you know, Sarah has been through the mill, like we all. But a man that has grown up and gone faithful in the house of the Lord. Um, and you know what? A really a man that has a love. Love, love to serve. And love just to see the sons of God do well. He just loves. He just loves the Lord a lot. And today I just want him to greet you. And maybe say something to encourage you. Because he's into this word. I greet you all in the precious name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Sixteen years ago, I built this pulpit. And I never thought that my wife would one day stand behind this and preach God's word. I thank God daily for his mercy upon my life. I thank him for his love. I thank him for his care. As Pastor has mentioned, I've been to the mill. I've been really through the mill. <coughs> they say that if you want to know the whole story, You've got to start from chapter one. Don't look at something on face value and think you know it all. 
and my encouragement for you is trust in the Lord always. Never give up. Because He hears you. The prerequisite is that you have to believe that He will show up for you in the end. Just keep on believing in God. Believe in His Word. Find that time to spend with God. Search for Him. Love Him. Revere Him. Because He loves you unconditionally. I thank you that you can be found in the house of God today. That this word may impact on your life. And transform you from where you are to where he wants you to be. Bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, even the word here is yellow wood. Those of you who understand. It's like an, it's like gold, incorruptible. A special word. For the word of the Lord to be placed that is unique and incorruptible. It's like gold refined in fire. And so that's what the pulpit is all about. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This young man has a, he he has a tremendous love for people. So passionate that he call, he called me a couple of times and he said, Pastor, this person is, is in need and the Lord has put them in my heart and I've been praying. And you know the amazing thing? He prays and the Lord connects him. He, he, he just come there. Come stand right here. Megan. Bless the congregation. Thank you, Father, for each one of your servants that have come this day, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, I release your blessing over each one that has come, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, those that are in need of healing, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I release you as Jehovah Rapha, mighty Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Everyone that is sick will be healed, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, by your spirit, move, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Even in their homes, Father, as representative unto their homes, Father, yes. everyone that is sick will be healed, I declare in Jesus' mighty yes. name. Father, I release your blessing over your people, Father, Amen. in the name of Jesus. They shall daily, Father, take up their cross and follow you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, be blessed this day, Father, yes. as we give you praise, Father. Yes. We say thank you for your word, Lord, you. that when we, when we call upon the name yes. of Jesus, you yes. hear us, mighty Father. Yes. You will never, ever turn from yes. us, Lord. Your yes. ear is always open to your, yes. the voice yes. of your children, yes. mighty Father. So we bless you, Lord. We say thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for this word in which you've prepared yes. for us, Lord. We give you praise, honor, and glory, Father. I ask you, Lord, that every home represented here, Lord, will lack none, Father. You shall provide every need, Lord, in Amen. Jesus' mighty That's name. Right. As, the, as the, yes. the miracle of the two fish and five loaves yes. were, Father, I ask you, Lord, to multiply in their Jesus lives, name. Lord, that yes. their home shall overflow, Lord, with blessings yes. in your season, Father, yes. in the mighty name of Hallelujah. Jesus. They shall lack none, mighty Amen. Father. Amen. I declare it in the name of Jesus. Amen. We give you praise, Father. We glorify your name, Lord. We exalt you this day. We thank you, Lord. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Amen. Give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah.